Okay, a hot topic in accounting these days uh, is the relationship between a firm's information environment and its cost of capital. Uh, by cost of capital, we mean the required return that investors expect commensurate with the risks that they have to accept should they invest in the company's stock. There has been uh, a plethora of empirical studies that uh, claim to have detected uh, associations between such characteristics as earnings quality or analyst following or dispersion of analyst forecasts uh, and uh, a firm's cost of capital, its expected return. In a recent paper that I completed with uh, colleagues Jing Lu and, and Jun Lu, uh, and is now forthcoming in the accounting review, uh, we examine uh, as a theoretical matter uh, whether there should be a relationship uh, of the nature that the empiricists claim to have found. Um, the intuition that the empiricists were operating under was a notion that if there's a class of investors that are better informed than other investors, then those other investors anticipating that possibility uh, will demand uh, protection through price and with a lowering of price, there will be an increase in the firm's cost of capital. However, this intuition is flawed. Uh, there are large numbers of so-called noise or liquidity traders in the market. Uh, that, these are traders that trade for reasons that are unrelated to an information advantage. And if you examine, in a formal sense, the trading behavior of insiders uh, and those less well informed, then you will find that as the economy becomes very large, the opportunity to diversify away uh, any firm specific risk and hence any value to firm specific information is then available. What happens is that the uh, informed investors uh, do uh, make superior portfolio choices uh, to the uninformed investors. Uh, but both of them uh, gain, uh, to some extent, at the expense of the so-called liquidity or noise traders. In equilibrium, the only information that matters is information about systematic factors, information that pertains to individual characteristics of firms will be eliminated uh, as the uh, size of an individual's portfolio expands uh, and, uh, and therefore will have no impact on its cost of capital. Uh, this means that the empiricists have to look beyond what are called pure exchange economies in order to come up with an explanation for their findings. Uh, in our empirical study that preceded this theoretical one, uh, we identified a factor, a systematic factor, that seems to be associated with information asymmetries. And we found that this factor, in fact, uh, is priced and does have an impact on its cost of capital. But as a theoretical matter, it must be a consequence of some impact that information asymmetry has on actual production and investment activities of the firm. Such a result as proven by our earlier paper, uh, or our theoretical paper, is not possible uh, in a pure exchange economy. And that's the essence of, of this work.